going to do. Let's go ahead and dismiss the young people to your class downstairs. Now, all of our children, you're dismissed to go to your class. I know that this is referred to as Palm Sunday, uh, but I believe that uh, where we are in our current study, that God wants us to conclude the book of Acts today. So if you have a Bible, turn with me to Acts chapter number 28. Acts 28 uh, will specifically deal with the resurrection next week. And then two weeks from today, we're going to begin a brand new book of the Bible, the book of Jeremiah. And we'll be studying that together on Sunday mornings. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, We're closing out the book of Acts. Uh, We've been here for almost 46 weeks. And I know we took a couple of breaks for special occasions and Christmas and things like that. But for the most part, it's, it's been 46 consecutive weeks studying. We saw the, the key word was witness, and, and we saw the power of the Holy Spirit, the theme of the church over and over and over again. Let's read verse 16. Acts 28, verse number 16. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. Again, when we came to Rome, Paul's goal was always Rome. His prayer was to go to Rome. If you remember a few weeks ago, we read Romans, the, uh, that letter, Romans chapter 1 and verse 10. Let me read it for you, or you can turn one page over, making request, if by any means, now at length, it might have been a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. So it was God's will for him to go to Rome. We talked about that prosperous journey. It wasn't the prosperous that we would think of in terms of prosperity, but it was God's intended plan for Paul to go to Rome. Uh, Again, Rome was his burden. I long to see you. Uh, This was his calling. Uh, The Bible says you must bear witness of me at Rome. And and so in verse 11, he's on his way. He's traveling up uh, through Italy. I'm sure he stopped at the Olive Garden. Uh, Romans 28, verse number 11. The Bible says, and after three months, We departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. From thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium, and after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Teoli. Now, I want you to understand that we're seeing he's just traveling up, and, and there are several things as we conclude this study that I believe are so important for us to see. And my encouragement to you is to, to lean in. Uh, the devil wants to distract our minds. The, the devil would, you know, you've been there before. I've been there before. You're reading the Bible and thinking about something else. Uh, you're, 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 you're singing a song, but your mind's in another place. I'm going to pray, but as I pray, let me encourage you to pray and ask God to speak to your heart as we read his word this morning. Father, I do pray that you'd bless in this time. I thank you so much for each person that's gathered. I thank you for each child that's downstairs as they're studying your word. Lord, I pray to today, regardless of what our personal needs are, that you would minister to our souls. That, Lord, your word would give us exactly what we need from you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd guide my words. I pray that you would speak to hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Number one today, the need to tarry. The need to tarry. So, uh, uh, Again, let me read you verse 14. We read it a moment ago. The Bible says, When we found brethren and desired to tarry with them seven days. One of the most important parts of the Christian life is for you and I to spend time with the people of God, worshiping God, encouraging each other, 
serving the Lord uh, in a congregation, corporate type setting. And notice, we, we see them, he, he found them, he was looking for them. The fellowship of believers, or in our language, we would say the church. Now, notice that Paul was not necessarily waiting for somebody to invite him. He sought them out. He wanted to be with other believers that were worshiping Jesus. And just like it is in our day, so it was in their day, there was no perfect believers. They all, they were dealing with persecution, but they all had things that they struggled with as well. But I will tell you today that there is nothing like being around God's people in God's house. There's nothing like being encouraged by the body of Christ. I'm so thankful for church. And we see this theme over and over and over again as we read the book of Acts. And and this first priority for Paul was to fellowship with God's people. He had that need to tarry, to be with them. And we see this theme, this thread that runs through here of the importance or the necessity of church in our lives. And I'm thankful for podcasts and I'm thankful for things that are available for us uh, online, Uh, but, but understand church is important and, and, and the, the, there's this need to slow down and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Church is not our design. Church is not uh, something that we thought of that we thought would benefit us. Church is God's design. God birthed the church. Uh, the church is the bride of Christ. And by the way, you know, there's times that Christians, they say things like this. They say, well, I, I just wish I knew if I was saved. Uh, we've had those questions before. The Bible says, uh, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Uh, John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, we know We have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. How do I know I'm saved? You pass from death unto life by salvation. How do I know I'm saved? I love the church. I love the body of Christ. Even though people around me today are imperfect, that's what's so beautiful about the church. We're unique. We're different. None of us are clones of each other. We have different mindsets. We have different mentalities. We have different goals, backgrounds, passions, status, all those type of things. Yet the one thing that brings us all together and unifies us is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can know that I'm saved if I love, according to 1 John 3, 14, the body of Christ. We ought to love church and hanging out with God people, that's one of the ways that we know that we are saved. And, and, and realize there's joy in this. Paul always sought out the Christians. Uh, you know, there's, there, there, there's something wrong in my life if I'm constantly feeling uncomfortable around Christians and I'm seeking to be with those that do not have a relationship with Christ. Let me read you verse number 15. The Bible says, And from thence, when the brethren heard us, they came to meet us as far as Epiphorum. And the three uh, taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and, and took courage. Now, this place was 43 miles away. And notice when Paul saw them, He thanked God and took courage. Can I say today that just being in the presence of God's people ought to cause us to just say, thank you, God, for your blessings in my life. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Uh, One of the reasons that we need church is because the world is so weighty. 
It's so negative. It's so, so heavy. There's, there's so much uh, uh, pressure and weight and sin and, 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 and negativity. And, and, and man, when I come into the presence of God with God's people, we, it's just such a short time that we gather together like we do this morning. And yet it's easy to say, thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Think about this man, Paul. How uh, he was persecuted relentlessly. People wanted him dead and beaten. And then, and then the, the shipwreck and the storm. I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I mean, I, he, he may not even have got his legs underneath him yet. He's still seasick. And, and just all that had happened. And he saw the church. He saw the Christians and he was so encouraged. And, and I'm, I'm so thankful that we can assemble together and worship God and hear the word of God and encourage each other. Notice, he took courage. God never intended for you and I to do life alone. That congregating with God's people sharpens us. It makes us better. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And I'll say this, uh, that, that we, when we come together and assemble together as the body of Christ, it sharpens us and encourages us. And, 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 and man, again, there's, there's just negatives and, and so many things in our life. And if we're not careful, we just we focus on, on that which, which is not eternal. And, and I don't want those things to weigh me down and to drag me away. I don't prioritize church because I'm a pastor. I prioritize church because I'm a Christian. And, and, and it's important that we understand that. And we saw this already, but notice we see in verse 15 the need to thank God. The need to thank God. The lengths that people went through to congregate and to, to fellowship it, to hear the word of God, it speaks volumes. They wanted to hear the word of God, and some people traveled 43 miles. And then there were some that didn't travel at all. There were some that were hungering and thirsting for God's word, and some didn't travel at all. Keep in mind, there was no cars, there was no buses, there was no train system. This was a long haul, a 43-mile a, a uh, long trip. It's so important that there was a passion, a, a burden, a desire. Listen, this took sacrifice. The idea of our corporate worship is not meant for our convenience. It's not meant for even for our comfort, although I think we're in a comfortable setting here today. But the goal is sacrifice. I realize that now, I, I'll preface this by saying some sacrifice sleep this morning, that if that alarm clock didn't go off, you'd still be knocked out. If that's you today, raise your hand. No, it's all right. Now, how many of you are like me, that you're just, you're up at five o'clock, there's no such thing as an alarm clock, your body's like, you're done, get out of bed. Raise your hand if, that, if that's you, thank you. I identify with you, all right? And, and my, my body's just like, get up, you're done. You're just gonna be annoyed in bed, you're not going back to sleep, you're only gonna be frustrated, time to get up, that's who I am. But, but nonetheless, that, that our, our gathering, it's good, it's healthy, if it requires sacrifice. It's good if our uh, uh, giving requires sacrifice. If we're not careful, it's like, well, let's see, I got $70 on me. And you know what? If I give God 10, that's not going to hurt too bad. Uh, uh, you, you know, here, you, understand that, that our worship ought to be sacrificial. Our giving ought to be sacrificial. Our time ought ought to be sacrificial. Too often, if we're not careful, we, we want to make sure everything that we want to do happens in life, and then we kind of uh, put God in place. Well, well, God, I, I can't spend time with you now because my show is on. Or, or God, I can't do this for you because I have to fill in the blank. But it's important that we realize it is healthy for us as a Christian when we sacrifice that which is most important to us 
for the good of God. And, and, and so don't miss in their trip. They stopped at Jerusalem. And, 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 and uh, by the way, I'll say that remember when Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Uh, there was people that were so close that never went to worship him. And then there was those wise men that traveled nearly a year and a half just to get to him. Deep sacrifice. It's striking to me. The scribes and Pharisees were all around. And yet they're like, if you find out anything, let us know. But they did not want to intentionally go and worship the Messiah, Jesus Christ. They sure seemed to be spiritual. It seemed like they had it all together, uh, but, 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 but realized the wise men, they traveled for a year and a half. And again, how determined are we? How courageous, how sacrificial are we going to be? Again, this week we call, refer to as Holy Week. Hearts are tender more than ever to invite people. It, you, you know, and it, it takes us out of our comfort zone to tell somebody about Jesus, to, to invite somebody to church. But it's really, okay, I want to encourage you this as well. When we, when we, gather next Sunday for worship. I'm going to preach a message that it's not, you know, I've preached messages on, on uh, Easter Sunday before where literally I just say he is risen 300 times and we just sat rah, 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 and, and that kind of a thing. I'm, I'm letting you know that next week is the perfect time to invite the skeptic. We're going to study the Old Testament where it's prophesied that Jesus is going to come and then we're going to, and how it happened, and then we're going to read the New Testament, how it was exactly fulfilled. The whole purpose of that is so the skeptic, the person that's unsure, can trust the Word of God. That, that, and that's where we're going to be next Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And more than ever, there's importance of inviting people so they hear the, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And we see that the, the fellowship and the, the passion that, that we have in our text of God's people coming together and assembling around the Word and needing the fellowship of each other. But let's keep reading reading verse 16. Acts 28 verse 16. When we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. Now, if you remember, up to this point, every time that we saw the Apostle Paul speak, he was always starting with his testimony, but not here. Uh, surely there were some formal charges that were in place. Remember the court documents that of, of these evil charges against the Apostle Paul? This is fascinating to me. Uh, if you've missed anything from this study in the book of Acts, I want you to get this because this just encourages me so much. Acts 28 verse 19. The Bible says, But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of, for this cause have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And so Paul lays it out. He begins his defense. He, at verse 21, they said unto him, We neither receive the letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. We haven't received the court documents. All those charges that were against you, Paul, we don't have them. I want you to get this. The third thing that we see in our text is this, the need to trust God's plan. Children of God, there is a need to trust God's plan. The question is, what happened to those charges? 
You and I have spent the last 10 weeks studying court case after court case after court case. Felix, Festus, Agrippa, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders, the people, the mob, court, 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 all these charges, charges, charges. What happened to all of these accusations? Paul knew they had been set. What happened to these letters? Can I propose to you today that these letters would have been given to the guards who were bringing the Apostle Paul? Those documents would have been on that boat where the Apostle Paul was carried as a captive. But wait a second. What happened to the boat? The ship was ripped apart. The ship went down in the middle of a storm. We studied that the last two weeks, and it ran aground, and the, the back end of this, the sea tore the back end of the boat, and all it was is broken pieces. And we studied God uses broken pieces, and God uses me, and God uses you, and we may mess up, but God still wants to use us, and things may break in our life, but God still wants to use us. And the ship was wrecked, and the ship didn't accomplish its intended purpose. But understand that God still used it. That boat was ripped apart. And I propose that these letters that Paul knew would have sent to incriminate him. Now, because of the storm, because of the broken boat, because of Eurachlidon, because of the hurricane, because of the, the boat that was broken and all that happened, those court documents are now in the depths of the sea. They no longer exist. The court documents to incriminate the the Apostle Paul. They never made it there. Can I say today we need to trust the plan of God. What we do is we worry and we fret and we think we figured it out and we think there's no hope. It's useless. I'm done. It's over. My life is a waste. I've gone as far as I can. But God has a plan and God specializes in things that are so uh, beyond our comprehension where we can only give him the glory and only give him the praise. I like the connection in Micah chapter 7 in verse 9 where the Bible says God takes all our sin and casts them into the depths of the sea. And Christian today, I know somebody here that you're carrying the weight, the emotional baggage of that thing that you've done. Somebody here is saying today, I've wasted years of my life. I've made terrible decisions. I've neglected God. I've been bitter at this. I've done that. I I, I, you're not going to believe what I did. I mean, my testimony is an absolute mess. But Micah reminds us that when you are saved, those sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Then God takes those sins and casts them into the depths of the sea where they are no more remembered ever again. Then we can praise the Lord for that. That's the power of the resurrection. When Jesus paid the price for your sins. He, he didn't just say, okay, try to do better. No, he covered your sins with his blood and placed his righteousness upon you and realized all my past sins, all my present sins, and even all my future sins are already under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you're saved today, I want you just to try to think on this again because it'll make your head spin. The sins that you don't even know you're going to do, God already paid for. Let me say that again in case you're not thinking. Tomorrow you're going to get mad at somebody. I hope you don't cuss somebody out. But you're going to get frustrated. Somebody's going to gossip. Somebody's going to tell a lie. Let, let's, let's not go down the road that you've not been on yet. Say amen right there. But whatever it is you do tomorrow, and by the way, this is not permission to sin. But we are sinners in nature until we get our glorified body. And praise the Lord, if you're saved today, there are sins that you've not even done are under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we can praise the Lord for that. And, and listen, the accuser of the brethren wants to stand up and, 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 and look at you and remind you of your past and remind you of your flaws and remind you of your mistakes and remind you of your shortcomings, remind you of the things you said and the things you did. But listen, God says, what sin are you talking about? I don't remembered anymore as far as the east is from the west so far hath he removed our transgressions from us in other words he never brings it up again 
If you're saved today, when you stand before God, you're not getting a high def screen of your sin. It's gone. It, you're, it's not to be brought up ever again. That's why we have so much to celebrate in, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To think that the king came, but didn't come to destroy us. He came to rescue us. And the only way to do it was to give his own life a ransom for you and I. That's why when they cried out, Hosanna! 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 They were hoping for a political king. But it was far greater than that. This was an eternal king that was going to die on the cross. And not only for their sins, but also for our sins. Those sins are forgiven. Very practically speaking, what you and I often look at as a ship sinking disaster, God views as a problem solving solution. In our life, we say it's crumbling. My home, my job, my school, my health, my situation, it's not working. And God is already working through that to accomplish his eternal purpose. Listen, it couldn't have meant, meant any worse for that boat. That boat was not going to be rescued. But down with that boat went those incriminating court documents that never made it to Rome to prosecute the Apostle Paul. It's almost as if God is saying they're in the depths of the sea with that boat. They're gone. They're forgotten. They're out of the way. God stepped in and took care of that. Joseph, your life is over. Uh, your family hates you. They sold you as a slave. They wanted you dead. You're falsely accused by Potiphar. You're thrown in prison. It's been years now. You've not had your, your breakthrough in years and years and years. What well, you meant for evil. God meant for good. Hey, can I say today, be patient. Wait on the Lord. God is not through with you. God meant it for good. And can we thank God today for those ship sinking disasters in our life that we think are taking us out, but really God's using them to protect us, to bring glory to his holy and worthy name. God did this, let that boat go down. So those letters never made it to Rome. And so it's important that we see the importance of, of fellowship and community in the body of Christ. We see the importance of thankfulness, the importance of, uh, to, to trust God's plan. And realize this, some traveled 43 miles to hear the word of God, some not at all. Verse 22, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Finally, the need for the word of God. The need for the word of God. Again, one last time, I'll say it again as we conclude this book. Church was a priority for Paul. We see the, the letters to the churches that he started and visited. And look at his formula, verse 23. When they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening. Uh, listen, there was a, a time, there was a place. It, it's so important that we, we, we recognize the need for us to be together. Together, God can do incredible things through the power of his church. And, and that's why the devil wants to attack in the church so much. The devil wants to get sister so-and-so against brother so-and-so because then they're not fighting the same opponent. They're now fighting each other. And we see it's all about Jesus. He says in verse 23, concerning Jesus. When Paul preached, it wasn't a cute story. It wasn't a, a, a powerful illustration. It wasn't a, 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 a neat poem. It was all about Jesus. It was Jesus high and lifted up and if we are preaching the name of Jesus Christ it never gets old it's the message that must be preached over and over and over again it is all about Jesus may our worship magnify Jesus may our preaching lift up the name of our Lord may our conversation be about the person of Jesus he said we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's the formula. 
It's all about Jesus. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And today, we stand before a God that cannot lie. He cannot change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews says. And he is there to save and to rescue and to redeem and to work in our lives and to impact us for his kingdom and his glory. We see it's all about the scripture. And he says in verse 23, talking about the law of Moses, how the prophets, in other words, the whole counsel of God. And that's a great place for me to insert our commercial. For two weeks from today, we're going to begin a study of the book of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Can I just go ahead and tell you? It's a dark book. It's a challenging book. It's a heavy book. I had to study it. It's difficult. But we're going to go through it. You know why? Because it's the Bible. It's the Word of God. And we can't just cherry pick Scripture. We need to preach the whole counsel of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, and understand what the word of the Lord is. And by the way, it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be encouragement. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but that's what Paul did here. He preached all the whole counsel of God, and, and, and it's all about lifting God up. Why? Because in every book of the Bible, every page of Scripture, we see Jesus. If you were with us on Thursday night, whether here or online, we, we, we kind of got a little into an awkward or type passage looking in the law of Moses and, and, and number or Deuteronomy 22 and 23 and, and some of those uh, 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 laws. But it's important. We, what we're looking at is Jesus. We've all fallen short. We've all sinned. None of us have kept the law. There's a need for a Savior for all of us. And that's when we see in Scripture. We, we see in Esther. Even the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is not mentioned there. But we see God high and lifted up as He's the one working. He's the one uh, working through Mordecai. And He's the one working through Esther and the testimony of His people. And just when you think Haman's going to get an advantage, Jesus wins. Why? Because we see the Lord. He's on every page page of scripture and we must preach him high and lift it up acts 28 verse number 30 the bible says and paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him preaching the kingdom of god and teaching those things which concern the lord jesus christ with all confidence no man forbidding him again that's it next chapter Next verse, next book. Uh, we as Christians need to be people of the Word of God. I am thankful uh, for... Uh, there's opportunities where, where we have, uh, we use our YouTube ministry and, and the live stream. And I'm thankful for it. I think of those people in the hospital right now that are tuned in online. Praise the Lord for that. There's times that we're traveling. Uh, I'm going to travel this Thursday, and I'm going to miss our Thursday service. I'm thankful for times that we're away, we're sick, we travel, uh, that, that we can tune into the live stream, or replay a message. But nothing uh, beats being in the house of God with God's people, uh, 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 worshiping the Lord together with the body of Christ. Let me say it like this. For years, I'm, I'm now 45 years old, and for years... I have watched uh, uh, college basketball and professional basketball on, on television. When I was a kid, I, I, I rooted for Michael Jordan and the Bulls and uh, the, the greatest player of all time. And, and, and you know, now that I'm here, I'm, uh, uh, Dolores converted me. I'm a Knicks fan now. And, 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 and watching them as they, as, they, as they march toward the playoffs and hopefully get healthy. Uh, and and, and uh, the one tie, the one connection that I have to, uh, to my days in, India, or in Illinois, uh, I'm no longer a Cubs fan, not really a Bears fan, I'm definitely not a Bulls fan, but the one thing, easy, uh, the one thing that I've held on to is, is my brothers and I, we always rooted for the fighting Illini, the, the Illinois collegiate basketball team. And that's the one thing from my childhood that Cade has picked up on. Well, this year, 
the fighting line, I have a good basketball team. And it is, it is one of the coolest things in the world when we watch an Illinois basketball game together. Uh, when, when I sit in my chair, get, prop my back up and, 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 and turn my lumbar support on, and, and, and I sit back and I, and, I, and I relax and watch the game. Cade stands about eight inches from the TV, and he's in ready position like this. <laughs> And he's in every single play, and he's cheering, screaming, and, and it's so cool to, 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 to watch the game. And there's something special about uh, watching uh, the game on TV, but there's nothing like being there in person. And I told Cade, if we make it to the Sweet 16, we're going to go. And it just so happens, Illinois made it to the Sweet 16, and they're going to play in Boston this weekend. And so Kate and I are going to go watch them in Boston on Thursday afternoon. And, and, and again, seeing them on TV is one thing. Seeing them in person with the excitement of March Madness and the college bands and the, 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 all that's in the air. And these guys are not playing for million-dollar contracts. They're just playing for the, the love of the game and, and, and the excitement of that. And when I think about that, I, I don't want to go apples to apples, but I think you get the understanding that there's times when it, it just the only option is live stream. Uh, if you're sick, uh, I, I get it. If you're, if, you're, if you're traveling, I get it. But thank God that we can gather together because there's nothing like being encouraged by the body of Christ. Nothing like being strengthened by the body of Christ. Nothing like being in God's house with God's people. Listen, I love our worship team. Uh, there's, there's nothing like our worship team. I'm thankful that when I'm away that I can enjoy our services online. But there's just something special when I'm in the house of God and, and just enjoying and seeing the expression on faces and being here and seeing what God is doing in hearts. And, 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 and praise the Lord for that. Verse 24, we'll wrap up with this. The Bible says, Acts 28, verse 24, And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believe not. Realize, not everybody you invite to Easter service next week is going to come. But some will. Some will respond. Verse 25, the Bible says, When they had agreed not among themselves, they departed. Now, after that, Paul sp uh, had spoken one word, Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, saying, Hearing ye shall hear, shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not per perceive. For this, the, the heart of this people is wax close, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Verse number 28, be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. They will hear it. Again, the theme witness, sharing our faith, is seen one last time over and over again, getting the gospel to one more person. We document the life of the Apostle Paul. If I was Paul, and I went through what uh, he went through, it would be easy to write an autobiography of the challenges. Yet the thread you see through his testimony is not poor me, life's not fair, I'm a victim. The thread you see is wherever I am, I'm going to share the gospel. On a boat, uh, in prison, uh, in court, wherever I am, in church, uh, in a mob, false accusations, it's all about the gospel. So two questions today and we're done. Have you received the gospel of grace. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? The second question is, if you believe it, who are you telling? This is what matters. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads.